My name is Andy Scott and I'm Projects Director at CTEC. I'm also Chair of the British Standards Committee responsible for fire alarm devices and a member of several other UK and European Standards Committees. Today I'm going to demonstrate CTEC's new EVAC Alert system and also explain a little bit about the new BS8629 standard for evacuation alert systems for residential buildings. Whereas a fire alarm sounds the alarm early in a fire event, evacuation alert systems are systems of last resort for use by the Fire and Rescue Service if they believe the stay put or defend in place strategy has failed. That's why the term alert is used instead of alarm and why no fire detectors or manual call points are connected to the system. As a system of last resort, an evacuation alert system must remain operational for extended periods during a fire. This has significant implications for the system's wiring, which I'll go into later. Let's take a look at CTEC's EVAC alert system. The heart of an evacuation alert system is the manual control panel, which BS8629 refers to as Evacuation Alert Control and Indicating Equipment, or EC. CTEC's EC is housed in this high security cabinet, which has been developed in cooperation with GERDA a company that specialises in fire-rated door sets and which was involved in the drafting of BS8629. In order to comply with BS8629, the cabinet is very strong and it has been certified to STS 205 BR2, which means that it can withstand a deliberate attack. The security of the cabinet is of prime importance to the Fire and Rescue Service, who need to be confident that it will always be available and fully working. The cabinet is installed indoors near the Fire and Rescue Service access point and as you can see it is very clearly marked. The patented lock complies with EN1303 and most importantly it uses copy protected keys that are already carried by the Fire and Rescue Service. Now let's take a look inside the cabinet where evac alerts, controls and indicators are located. The first thing you will notice is that you don't see the controls and indicators normally associated with a fire alarm panel. This is because they are hidden behind this cover, so they can only be accessed by the maintenance contractor. This demo is configured for a 16 storey block, with the top switch controlling the top floor and the bottom switch controlling the bottom floor. There's a power light, a power fault light, a general fault light, a fault warning sounder and a button to silence it. Slide-in labels clearly identify the floors and for each floor there is a robust toggle switch that operates the alert devices, a light to show that the alert signal is active and a fault light. Evac alert can be figured with up to 48 zones in one cabinet which is more than enough for most buildings. If more zones are needed several ECs can be networked and mounted next to each other. Flicking a switch down operates the alert devices on that floor and lights the associated red indicator. Flicking the switch up turns them off again. So if there is a fire on the 14th floor and the fire and rescue service decide they need to evacuate the building, they simply operate the relevant switches. As each switch is operated, the adjacent red light shows that the alert devices in that zone are working. Note that there is no evacuate all control. This is to reduce the risk of all residents trying to get down a single staircase at the same time. And that's it. As you can see, it's very simple for the Fire and Rescue Service to use and also why it is so important that the cabinet is secure to prevent unauthorised access. Now, let's delve a little deeper and look inside the EC. At the top, we have batteries for up to 72 hours standby. Below, we have an EN544 certified power supply and next to that, the wiring loop driver boards. On the front door, we have the manual control interface boards. BS8629 says that the minimum number of fault tolerant wiring loops is one for up to four storeys, two for up to 10 storeys, and three for anything taller. However, there are limitations on how many devices can be powered from a loop. And as a rule of thumb, we recommend connecting no more than five or six floors on a loop. As this is a 16 storey system, this EC has three loops connected. Now, let's take a look at the rest of the building. As I mentioned earlier, 
The fact that an evacuation alert system is a system of last resort has implications for the wiring. The wiring in each flat needs to be separated from the addressable loop by an isolation device that protects against open and short circuit faults that may be caused as fire spreads through the building. In this way, any number of faults in different flats can be present at the same time without affecting any other flats. CTEC have two methods of achieving this protection, the simplest of which is an interface outside each flat. The other method is a four or eight way flat interface that can be installed in an e-bar riser. This interface requires fewer connections so is easier to install and it gives the ability to add an EN54 monitored power supply for visual alarm devices and vibrating pillar pads should these be required. Now, let's take a quick look inside a flat. BS8629 says that most flats will only need a single evacuation sounder, which should be installed near the entrance. CTEX alert sounder is one of the loudest and most efficient on the market, and it also has a self-test function that avoids the need to listen to the sounder in each flat during annual maintenance. If necessary, more sounders, visual alert devices, and even vibrating pillar pads can be fitted. To hear what the alert sounder sounds like, I've asked one of my colleagues to activate the toggle switch on the evac alert panel. So, in a moment, you will hear it sound. The sounder tells the flat occupants that they need to leave the building. I'm now going to return to the evac alert panel. As you can see, I've removed the cover from the maintenance controls, which anyone who is familiar with CTEX ZFP fire alarm panels will recognise. In order to use the maintenance controls, for instance, to test the sounders in individual flats, an engineer's code must be entered on the touchscreen here. The use of CTEX established EN54 certified fire alarm technology means that EVAC alert can be incorporated with other systems such as CTEX Grade C Hush Pro domestic fire alarms in the flats and the common fire alarm system installed to replace a waking watch. EVAC alert can also be linked to CTEX secure cloud-based envisioned data management software allowing system status such as faults, false alarms, confirmed alarms and manual evacuation events to be remotely reported, recorded and analysed. These events, along with building plans, can be displayed on desktop and portable devices. Using these technologies together can provide significant safety, management and financial benefits. So, when and where are evacuation alert systems required? At the moment, they are only required by law in Scotland in new residential blocks over 18 metres tall. However, the Grenfell Tower Inquiry clearly recommended evacuation alert systems for new and existing high-rise buildings, of which there are about 13,000, plus about 100 new developments every year. The Government says it will implement the Inquiry's recommendations in full and that it is working on evacuation alert systems with the National Fire Chiefs Council. The Inquiry also questioned whether the definition of high-rise should be changed from 18 metres, which is an arbitrary number, to 11 metres, which is the safe working height of first response fire tender ladders. If this happens, the number of buildings in scope will exceed 100,000. Regardless of legislation, there's a lot of interest in evacuation alert systems and an inexpensive and effective way of giving occupants confidence that there is a plan B if the worst should happen. And that is CTEC's evac alert system. If you would like more information or would like to attend one of our free online CPD seminars on the new BS8629 standard, please visit evac-alert.com for details.